Here I was thinking I was doing amazing in the industry. <laughs> you tell me you've been in the industry for 19 years, the same amount of time as me. You're on the other side of this thing. I'm over here. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, here was kind of the thing for me. If EXP had existed when I was an agent, you know, when I was sort of evaluating where I would, what I was going to do with my career, I wouldn't have started EXP. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000. I'm your co-host. I'm here with Juan. And today we're talking past, present, and future of eXp Realty with the founder of eXp Realty and self-made billionaire, Glenn Sanford. What's up, Glenn? Hey, Ricky. Um, yeah, uh, I am down in uh, actually Miami looking at the beach right out there. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. But thanks for, thanks for having me on. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Glad, glad you're doing a lot of traveling nowadays. Trying not to. I mean, uh, you know, COVID's put a little bit of a kibosh. This is the second time I've traveled in, uh, in since March last year. But I did take a motor coach, though. I mean, mm. I, I if you call that traveling from October through through the end of December, we were uh, October twenty second through the end of December. We we did a little driving around, and I did one flight during that trip. But for the most part, I've been kind of home base. So let's take a second, man. Let me <laughs> like, let's take a moment. And I just want to know what it feels like to be Glenn right now. <laughs> like on top, you're, you're completely, I would say you're probably at the high, you're probably the top guy in the industry. I mean, I mean, Juan, I mean, do you Glenn, what, you, what you've been able to do over the last four or five years, uh, it defines exponential growth. <laughs> and the fact that you've created this platform and you had the vision for it, what 15 years ago yeah 12, 12 uh, years ago yeah mm -hmm. it, it's nothing short of incredible so so tell us uh let's just soak it in for a second but what's it like right now uh what's life like for the uh self-made billionaire in the cloud-based brokerage industry yeah no it's 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 good uh, you, you know uh, more than anything we've got such an amazing team behind us uh you know we've got almost a thousand people on staff with with uh, the various exp world holdings um, companies, uh, primarily EXP Realty. And with such an amazing team, it does uh, allow me to work on the things that I find interesting and impactful rather than in the beginning days, it was literally very much of a, a directive role. Go do this, go do that, you know, that type of thing. So now it's very much of a, you know, I, I feel like I'm in my, my element, uh, you know, a lot of flow and as a result, you know, able to, you know, think strategy long-term and uh, which is pretty is really fun. I don't really think, you know, I, well, I take that back. I try not to let the, the B word go to my head. Um, you know, I live well below my means by significant margin. And so for me, it's really about making an impact and the B is nice to have, but it's, uh, it's not the reason why I do everything that I do. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. What I mean, it's it, well, when you take that out of the equation, that's when the B kind of appears, right? It, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I say, you, it, you know, most people don't do the right things for the right reasons. They might do the right things or they might do something for the right reason, but doing both of them, uh, that takes a lot of um, sort of intestinal fortitude over time because it's always tempting to shortcut the process. It's always tempting to go, you know, if I do, if I do this, I could make more money in the short run. Like, mm -hmm. and then, and then pretty much you're done. Like that's, that's it, you know, as opposed to thinking about the long game, which is always just continually staying in right thing, right reasons, right time, and, and trying to stay in that zone. Because what I've found is that everything works out better, takes longer to get to each milestone, but you get to each milestone, which is you don't do when you try to shortcut the process. Yeah. So you're down in Miami speaking at 10X this, uh, this week, huh? I am. Yeah. So Sunday morning at 9 a.m., uh, I'll be actually on stage, I think 30 to 45 minutes, Grant, and I will be having a one-on-one -on -one talking about EXP, the journey, so the platform. You know, he's, he's become really, really enamored with the EXP model, especially now that he knows it. Initially, you know, we, we started talking back in early January and then... Um, and we had circled around a little bit to have a potential conversation maybe a year or so ago, but never actually talked. But uh, once he started to understand the model, he's like, uh, initially it was just going to be, hey, let's get you involved with the spokesperson role and let's do this, let's, let's do that. And he started looking at the model. He goes, man, I want to build a, a revenue share line. 
I'm like, well, you're going to have to get licensed. He goes, oh man, well, I'm doing all this other real estate stuff. Um, and I said, well, you know, Elena could get licensed. And I guess Elena and Grant were sitting together at the same time. And Elena's like, I'll get my license. And so, so she literally passed her exam on Saturday, her national exam. So we're, we're in the process of bringing on the newest agent. Uh, we'll, will eventually be Elena for a moment and then there'll be somebody else be the newest agent. So, so Glenn, it's, it's incredible because you're at uh, 47,000 agents worldwide. I think we're in about 11 countries at this point. And it sounds to me like you're still attracting yourself, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't, the, the last person I, I sponsored into the company was, uh, was Debbie, my significant other. So everything else I do is on behalf of others. So in this particular case, I was supporting Lisa Copeland, who had a, a relationship for the last 10 years with uh, Grant and Elena, good friends with Elena. And so I supported her in the uh, agent attraction process. But I've, you know, I've kind of made it a, a, you know, at this point, I have the CEO role. Uh, I don't want to be in competition with any of our agents and brokers. And so I just want to support anybody who's out there attracting. So I had uh, conversations yesterday with uh, with probably two different attraction conversations with different people that were that had some you know big players that they're trying to get over the over the hump and so I probably have one or two of those uh, calls a day supporting agents but me personally um, you know I've just made it I think prior to that um, it was Ian Marshall who I've known since 2005 so he you know and he ultimately you know brought in Gene Frederick indirectly so. He, Carrie Lucas, Elizabeth Riley, and then Gene Frederick. And of course, that blew up that whole portion of the organization. And, um, but those are my last two recruits. And then the other, probably outside of that, so all the people that were with me in the beginning, Dale Kreiser, Brian Colhane, and some others that were, are still on my front line from day one. <laughs> That's amazing. So real quick, I just want to touch on this for just a second, because I want to get your take on this whole, because there's so many agents worried about Zillow taking over kind of thing. I just want to get your quick take on that situation. One, I think it's wise to be a little paranoid uh, of Zillow, because I think it will change up your decision making matrix for you as an agent. Because I think what you want to do is you want to be aligned with a company that ultimately it, you know, can in fact have your back. And there's probably only, you know, two or three of them that are out there in my mind that could have your back as an, as an agent. EXP certainly in my mind is the, the number one, not just because it's the company that I started, but because as one national brokerage platform that we don't have to deal with all the issues that, that franchises have to deal with, we can actually pivot we can create new products and services. You know, in the last uh, two years, we launched a platform called Express Offers, so that you can generate your own iBuyer style uh, offers. We bought a, an IDX company, which was going to create a really great consumer experience. Um, we've got some uh, some interesting uh, companies we're talking to right now about having our own exclusive uh, data products that consumers will be interested in. So we're working on sort of some things that would make us one of those sites that consumers would use. But uh, I think if you're not with the right company, uh, you'll eventually need to move because you're the company you might be with will, will maybe out of business because of the types of pivots that Zillow continues to make. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but you don't see, you don't see Zillow monopolizing the industry or wiping out agents or, you know, all these things everybody's saying out there. No, I, you know, there's, I think the, the challenge that I see is that it is Zillow would have to, in fact, start to employ agents themselves in order to really change the, the change the entire landscape of, of real estate. Now they may, they may get, you know, five to 10% on the, on the, the I buyer side of the equation, mm -hmm. Um, they may end up getting another, you know, five to 10% of, of real estate transactions going through their platform. So maybe they, they end up being 20% of the marketplace in some capacity, but they'll still be using agents for, um, that are affiliated with other brokerages for most all of that business. And, and if you think about, you know, um, it's buying a house or selling a home is not the same as ordering an Uber, you, you know. Once you've done, you know, you order an Uber once and you don't need, you know, anybody to help hold you through the process or help you through the process or download the app or whatever. It's pretty easy. You push a button, you get a car, takes you to where you want to go. Buying a home, selling a home, and that's a, it's an expensive proposition. Even me as a, 
um, you know, somebody who has been in real estate now for 19 years, um, I still wouldn't buy or sell a home without the assistance uh, of an agent, uh, even though I certainly know the industry, you know, there's just too many things to keep track of. And, you know, I'm a busy guy. There's lots of busy people out there. Why the heck would you want to accidentally make a mistake if you can have a, a trusted professional help you through the process? Now, here I was thinking I was doing amazing in the industry. <laughs> you tell me you've been in the industry for 19 years, the same amount of time as me. You're on the other side of this thing. I'm over here. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here, here was kind of the thing um, for me. If, if EXP had existed when I was an agent, you know, when I was sort of evaluating where I would, what I was going to do with my career, I wouldn't have started EXP. Like there would have been no need. I would have been exactly where you are. And by the way, I, I guarantee that, you know, once your organization, I know your organization is, is, is in, a, in a good place, but once you're in a good place with your organization, your, your quality of life is going to be way better than mine. Like my quality of life, because I'm, I have to keep track of, you know, thousands of people. I've got SEC stuff, all this other stuff that goes along with it. Um, you know, I probably, uh, I, you just, just on that note alone, you'll probably live an extra one or two years. I, I've read the data, like CEOs running companies. I mean, they, they give up a couple of years of, of, of life at the end of their life, but yeah, and I enjoy it. I'm not, not, I'm not complaining, but I, I, but I think your quality of life will probably be better in a, in, in a lot of respects than my quality of life. And no, I think I, that it, I think it's incredible. You bring that up, Glenn, because a lot of people are always thinking oh, more is more, right? And if we just amass all of this wealth, it's going to be for the better. But at the end of the day, it is about the quality of life and what you've given back to these agents in terms of this opportunity to grow their business and really have an asset that's going to continue to grow and grow and grow as time goes on. Um, it's really incredible. So um, I, I'd love to hear the story from day one in, in terms of the first day you got your license up until the point where you had this idea to create EXP. You want us to take it back on this journey and really explain how it all started? Yeah. So, um, you know, 2002 uh, was interesting. I had uh, I created a, an internet company, a company called eShippers.com. We were an outsourced e-commerce logistics company, and we'd partnered with United Van, Van Lines, Mayflower Transit, um, a credit card clearing service company called Card Service International. And we were basically building kind of like a, a an Amazon fulfillment style company for small to mid-sized manufacturers and retailers. And so we, it, it was really a great business model, but I had an idiot business partner um, and, and, uh, he basically made the statement to me that he, who has the goals, ma gold makes the rules and he had the gold and I had the business plan and he wouldn't even, you know, sign checks to put, put furniture in our offices. He was an avid golfer. So he wanted to put our, uh, put our corporate office in Phoenix, Arizona, when U Unigroup in, in Missouri had offered us space in their actual offices for free. So we could be connected and aligned and really working together. And anyway, uh, Ultimately, at the end of the day, I became a dot bomber out of that. And, and, and so in 2000, late 2001, I moved back to Pacific Northwest. I had uh, launched a, some, some websites for the local chambers of commerce while I was doing the eShippers project. And it was just my give back to the community because uh, I thought that th there would be some value in having these chamber sites. Both the chamber sites get, got given back to me right about the same time that I moved back to the Pacific Northwest. And so uh, I started to sell some ads on these websites to local businesses. And I was running around doing website development work. And one of the people I sold a, an ad to, $25 a month, was a local realtor. And his email didn't work. And so I, I, it hadn't worked for, I guess, months. And, and so I got it fixed in like 10 or 15 minutes. He said, hey, can you, can you do work for me? I started working on his website, started generating some leads for, for him as an agent. And uh, his name, Hugh Brawford, and, and he goes, uh, he goes, uh, um, and he was 65, I was 30, or he was 60, 62, 63, and I was 30, 35. He says, Glenn, you need to get your real estate license. I'm like, I need my real estate license like I need a hole in the head. That, that you know, I, I was not super excited. I was getting paid 60 bucks an hour to, to do website development work, and, uh, and, and I was looking for my next technology project, but I sort of needed a job. And, and, uh, at the, it, but I told him, Hey, I don't want to wear a realtor pin at the grocery store. I don't want to be, you know, you know, hitting up my friends and family. I, I'll, I'll help you on the internet lead gen side and work those leads. And, 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 and he said, fine, fine, fine. And then, um, and then I 
didn't get my license for about a month. And then he approached me and said, Hey, Glenn, how come you don't have your license? I said, well, I get paid $60 an hour to, to do website development work. And he said, I'll pay you $60 an hour, go get your darn license. So I got paid $60 an hour to study for my real estate license exam. So I got paid $3,600, I think six times six, is that 36, $3,600 to actually study for my real estate license exam. Uh, and then he guaranteed me three grand a month, you know, as, as an agent on his team. And so he basically took every objection away that I had. And so that's how I got into business. Um, the cool thing about it was that I, I, I put my blinders on um, because I really wasn't at the beginning really excited about real estate, but I'm going, this guy's paying me. I better kick ass and take names. So that was, you know, because I had a responsibility just because he, he was taking this risk on me. It was certainly outside of the box. And so that year, I, I ended up from April 29th till the end of the year, I sold 17 properties just to clients that I met online. Um, my first full year, um, I did a little, little over 210,000 in, in, in commissions in 2003, um, you know, 23, 25 properties, um, $7.3 million in production. And then Hugh and I had a two-year deal. And so that came up in, um, in March of uh, 2004. And, and at that point in time, I had actually had numerous websites generating leads around the Pacific Northwest. And, uh, uh, and we were actually looking at how do we build a team? And so we were looking at, we, we looked at Remax, actually, we're getting ready to go to Remax. And then, um, and then um, I, I met uh, somebody, uh, the guy that I was with, he was with Remax, he, he was a guy, one of the guys that was running sort of a team function for me. And, um, oh, no, he was at General Scott, we were going to go to Remax. And uh, he said, hey, check out this Keller Williams thing. Um, they've got kind of a team-friendly program. And so I looked at Keller Williams and, and they gave, I looked at the Red Book and looked at their profit share program and go, okay, this, is, this makes sense. I can recruit agents. I'm generating tons of leads. I can do this anywhere in the country. Why don't I use this as a platform to, to do something? So that's how I got into the, the business. You know, in 2004, um, I was the number three team in our region um, in, in, in Keller. Um, I was actually number one team in my office, but they ended up recruiting a team in December to join and that had better production. And so that, that team got the top team award, which just pissed the hell off, uh, uh, that pissed me off big time. But the next year did about 60 million in production, 2005 to, or 2000, no, 2006 did about 60 million. And then, then went independent in 2007 uh, with a team-based brokerage model and did about 73 million that year. And then we were on track to do about 100 million in 2008. And then of course, everything changed, you know, July, August, and then Lehman Brothers, you know, declared bankruptcy and all the other stuff. And then it, literally the whole game changed by September of 2008 and had to close a bunch of offices and, and then figure out what we were gonna do next. And that was, that, that was interesting too, because my assistant at the time, she kept on telling me that everything was fine, everything was fine. And then she up and quit one day in October. And I'm going, this is really weird. You don't quit when you've got a job in, 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 you know, I wasn't parent huge, but still it was a job when the whole, in, everything's cratering, logging the bank accounts, no money, credit cards are totally maxed. She didn't have the heart to tell me the only thing that she, she, she could she do is, is she just left and literally wouldn't answer her phone, wouldn't answer her emails. And uh, because I think she was like, I, I, I messed up here because I didn't tell how, how bad things were. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I, the funny thing was, as I solved it, like a week later, if I would have known, I just, I went and gathered a few friends and family around, raised a quick 150,000, got us through to 2000, 2009. But it was, uh, it would have been nice if she would have told me before I had to <laughs> find out on my own. Wow. 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 So, and then that brought you to coming up with the um, the idea of EXP. Yeah. And so 2007 was kind of an interesting year. Cause I, um, 2006, I was in the top 50 nationally with Keller. Um, and so, uh, and that was my fourth full year in the business, I think it was. And so, um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and I was recruiting a lot of agents. In fact, I was jumping on planes to recruit agents to, both my team and to Keller Williams in general, it's just because I wanted to build some passive income for, for myself and my family. 
you know, something happened to me, I wanted something, some sort of nest egg. And so I was doing whatever it took to sort of grow that part of the business because I thought that was going to be my retirement plan. Um, and, um, and then I got my 1099 in 2007 in, in January. And uh, I got for 100, on 184 people about $6,000 in profit share. And I'm gone. I, I was totally deflated because I'm like going, this, this is not penciling for me. Uh, and so that's why we left. That's why we ended up leaving, leaving Keller and going independent. And, uh, but I, at that time, uh, I said to the team, I walked down the hall and there were a couple of guys there, Lauren and Rob. And I said, guys, if we ever build a company, we're going to do revenue share, not profit share. And so mentally, the, the, th the thought process for me was that um, if you figure out what your business constraints are or your, your business model is, if you can put in just a decent management team, they'll figure out how to at least break even. That was sort of mentally the, the, the game plan. And, and uh, if they're good, they'll actually figure out how to make a profit. So, that, so I'm like, hey, you know, everybody, you know, almost anybody can break even. I figured like, I can find some folks that can break us even. We'll put a revenue share plan in place. I'll get revenue share, company will grow, all, all is right in the world. But uh, so we talked about that in 2007. And so in 2009, after the, the housing downturn, we, we got an uh, opportunity to sort of almost start with a clean sheet of paper and take everything that we had thought of from 2002 all the way through 2009 that we thought was broken about the business or could be significantly improved. We just said, hey, let's do that. Like, let's do that model that we know is the future model of real estate. And let's not wait for somebody to create it. Let's create it ourselves. Because, you know, all the stuff that we're doing in EXP, and, and, and it might be a little naive on my part, but I actually believe that most people saw a version of this model in their head that there's going to be a company that will do something like this at, at some point. Um, because it just makes sense. I mean, the, the fact that you don't have to have physical bricks and mortar offices, the fact that you're sharing some 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 revenue with your agents and brokers who are helping you grow, you're sharing some of the ownership with the company. You know, all these things. You know, in, in you know makes intuitive sense. And if you were to ask somebody, sort of just, what do you think the future well real estate looks like? They would describe some version of what EXP looks like. You know, in terms of what the the future future state would be. And I'm like, why are we, why don't we just build what we know is going to be the future? So did you when you when you came up with it and you guys started working on it, did you actually visualize it like in your mind, you know, as the founder and, um, you know, becoming the figure you are in the industry at this point? Did you see it going to this point back then? Well, we're, we're quickly approaching a number that I talked about back in about 2012, 2013, which is. Uh, I, I felt like if we could get to 50,000 agents over some period of time, um, like 20 years, that that would be a home run. Like that would be like the, 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 the holy grail of a brokerage. And, mm. and now we're, you know, 47,000 plus agents might even, who knows, we might even be, uh, I, I'm not looking at the numbers right now in real time, but, you know, based on how fast we're growing, might even be 48,000 this week. So, so we have a potential of being, you know, 50,000, you know, by you know, end of March, early April. I mean, that's sort of how fast we're growing up from 41,000 at the, uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, but I thought that would be a home run. And in 2012 as well, I think uh, Jason Guessing and I sat, sat with Stefan Swanepoel. And so you probably know, know Stefan. He, of course, he's a, you know, a futurist and, a, and, and an industry person, a coach, a mentor, all kinds of stuff for, for, for the industry. And uh, Jason and I sat with him and said, "Hey, we'll be ten thousand agents by uh, by twenty twenty." And 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 it was funny because you know Stefan's like bullshit, <laughs> you know he's doing he's kind of like doing that, and he says, "I don't believe you." I said, and and Jason and I were like, we'd done the numbers, like we we knew our, we saw our spreadsheets, we saw how many agents were joining every month, and and we saw that we were growing, you know, between five and nine percent month over month. That was kind of our, our growth rate from the basically the beginning, and we knew the the value prop just made sense. So for us, it's like I'm pretty sure we'll be there in in 2020, and of course in 2020 we ended up at. Um, what did we end up? So it's 2021. Like Forty-one thousand, I think, by the end of the year. Yeah, so we we way undershot that that uh, that that number when we said ten thousand. So, so the answer is no. You didn't think it was going to go because you 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 said fifty thousand is a home run. But right here we are. You got several agents in the company 
predicting we're going to a hundred thousand by the end of the year and even a million over the next whatever, you know, right. I mean, there's so there's so the answer is no, you didn't see it going to the to the to the extremes that it is. Yeah, the short answer is no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was pontificating. <clears throat> yeah, and now and, and now, Glenn, now that you know, kind of uh, you've penciled in the numbers now, I'm sure you look at these projections all the time. Where do you see it going 10 years from now? If everything works out at the same growth we're having now? Yeah, you know, um, well, I'll do some quick math. So so the let's just say we're 47,000 agents right now. We've been growing since inception by over 50% year over year, but I'm going to, I'll moderate that to 40%. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, yeah, big number. Like over a million agents is what I'm what I'm coming up with on paper here. So so I, I I think that you know over the next ten years we we certainly have the potential to be over a million a million agents. I'm showing um, one point three five nine million um, uh, in in, uh, in 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 ten years from from today on a moderate growth rate. But this is of course worldwide. Of course, if that was just in the U.S., we'd have every agent in America working for EXP. Right. Right, right. So I was looking at the numbers. You guys um, released some early numbers, right? We're not reporting for another couple of days. Um, right. On Thursday, we'll we'll have the uh, we'll do the actual reporting. So how so how accurate are these pre numbers? Yeah, top line revenue and net income, and uh, those are uh, those are all accurate. I think what, what did we do like six hundred million dollars in the quarter or something like that. And six hundred and nine million in the fourth quarter. And just uh, just to compare, uh, Remax did seventy two million. Let's see, yeah, seventy two million versus six hundred and nine million. <laughs> yeah, and and you have to sort of normalize that a bit because you know Remax is really they're just generating franchise fees, so uh -huh. they're and and where we're actually reporting uh, commissions because we're actually the broker of record. Mm. Uh, Remax is 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 just a franchisor. So they don't, they're not the broker of record. So they're not able to report all the numbers from, from, a, from all the transactions. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So do you think that gives us an advantage or a disadvantage when it comes to reporting earnings and so on and so forth? Yeah. So I know you're, you're a bit of an investor, uh, Ricky, I've watched uh, some, some of your videos, but you know, are, are you familiar with the peg ratio? Peg, no. Peg. So peg is price price earnings over growth. Oh and yeah, so, yeah. So it's um, you know a lot of people talk about a PE ratio, uh, yeah. but a PE ratio uh, you know doesn't really mean much unless you actually look at the growth rate of the company. And so for us, you know, we we put in the growth rate of the company uh, compared to a Remax, a Real G, you know, whoever you know, Compass just filed their numbers. They're getting ready to potentially go public, and we're the fastest growing you know company. Uh, across the entire real estate landscape from, from a growth perspective. So when you, when you just, th those are the numbers I kind of look at is like, we want to keep the, the pedal on the growth curve um, and, and to make sure that we continue to, to power through it, you know, 50, 60, 70% year over year growth rates, because, you know, we'll be able to, you know, two, three, four years, we start to add other services in a, in a major way, mortgage, title, escrow, all those things. It starts to, really play into um, a, a, a highly profitable enterprise by having, you know, so many agents on the platform. Yeah. And just to go ahead for all the audience that's listening and tuning in, I just pulled up the, uh, the investor presentation uh, that was as of March 2nd, 2021 updated. And uh, it's, it's impressive to see the growth. Where were we at at the beginning of uh, 2016? 2016. Oh. Well, that looks like a pretty small number. I'm looking at the graph myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a thousand, a thousand, it looks like something from, like that. Yeah, actually, 2016, we passed on February 29th, I think it was, because that was a leap year or whatever. Um, so we we actually hit a thousand agents on February 29th, 2016. Wow. And, and from 2008 to 2016, what was that like? Growing the company, uh, being a part of really a group of innovators that said, you know what, we think this is the future. What, what was that like? What was the culture like? Yeah, you know, it's, it, it was, it's similar to what it is today, just smaller. You know, uh, you know the, the difference is, is, you know, when we were under, let's just say under a thousand agents, you know, I felt like I knew ev everyone. So 
our last major event um, that we did that was EXPCon um, in 2019, and and that was in Las Vegas. And so you know, Jason and I are there. We're doing the awards. Of course, there were others there as well, but of course, Jason had been with with EXP since early 2010, so almost from the very beginning. And literally, he and I are commenting, man, we know nobody here. Like, we don't know, like, in comparison to when we were under a 1,000 agents, we, like, almost knew everybody. Anybody who showed up at, a, at events, we knew everybody because, you know, only 20%, 200 people might show up in an event when we're under a 1,000. So, so that would be sort of the, the, the peak of it. Um, and, uh, and now we have, you know, three, 4,000, 2,000, well, 2,500 people in the room, and we know less than one out of every 10 people in the room. That, that's what I think is so amazing, to be honest with you, because it's like the companies have all the middlemen, right? The franchisees, the, the regional owners, the broker owners and all that. And we basically got rid of all that and go straight from the company to the agent. Let them have the ability to basically be, in a sense, a CEO of their own brokerage kind of deal. Whereas, you know, you build your network and at the end of the day, like some of these guys like, like Brent and Rick, like <laughs> there's, I, I thought about it. There's no way that out of the 10,000, 12,000, whatever agents they have, that they probably only know a hundred or two or 300 or 500 at the most, if they have a, a memory of an elephant. Um, it's just amazing, but they're making a huge revenue share on 10,000 agents. Um, not that they don't have influence and are doing everything they can do to help their entire downline. I mean, I talked to Brent and, uh, it was really interesting because he, 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 he said something that really hit me hard and he was talking about how, of course he took time out of the day to talk to me for a while, but, and I have, we're completely different sides of the road there. Um, except for the fact that we're both owners in the company, right? That's what makes this whole thing work. But he was talking about how he, he, he will go out of his way to help people on his 18th level and his 19th level. And I said, yeah, that's cool, because then maybe your, your guys on your, you know, your seventh level are benefiting because the guys on their seventh level, that's people on there and it's helping everybody all the way up. And he said, Ricky, it's not even about that. You know, it's like you said from the beginning, Glenn, it's about helping people who can't even help you or don't even have a chance. It's about helping everyone, not just because they can help you in return. Um, so that, that's what's so incredible about uh, what I think about this company is because um, I could have started my own brokerage, right? When I left Remax, I could have started my own brokerage. I looked at that, but this is way better, <laughs> way better. Like you said, if it was around, you wouldn't have started it. Um, it's, it takes all the liability off of us. We can literally build a company that's as large as one of these large brokerages, right? Have zero liability, ownership in the company, sharing the revenue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just take a moment. Glenn. <laughs> Hell, you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're, you're welcome. No, it, it's fine. It was interesting, you know, back in 2008, 2009, I mean, I was looking around at the industry going, okay, where could we, you know, plug in? that would provide all the benefits that we were looking for as, as a team, as, as an agent, and it didn't exist. And we're going, this, you know, this blows, because we're thinking, you know, with, with this big of an industry, there's gotta be a company we could be aligned with that we wouldn't have to build it, but it didn't exist. And so yeah. we're going, okay, if it doesn't exist, then we better, we better build it. What, and what, what year did, were you actually, did you actually become licensed in all 50 states? Uh, probably 2016 or 17. Yeah. Know, something like Man, that. Man, I just, I just imagine everything you went through and, and your team went through to, to go through all that, you know, to get, to get to this point. It's, to me, it sounds rough. <laughs> to me, it yeah. sounds rough. Well, it, you know, it, it probably is. And one of the things I, I actually thought about when we, we launched it is, well, there's a couple of things. One, Tom Peters is, was one of my you know, people, somebody I studied for a long time, just, to, you know, he wrote a book uh, with another guy, Robert Waterman back in the eighties called in search of excellence. And, and, and one of the, and I used to listen to his audio tapes and just a lot of business insights and ideas. And he, he talked about this whole idea that, you know, it's just, it's, it's all about making things and selling things like, like it's, it's, you know, if you overcomplicate it, then, then it might overwhelm you. Like nobody even knows how to like make, like no one person knows how to make a pencil, 
But if you decide to make a pencil, you can pull a bunch of people together and they can figure out how to make a pencil, build the lead, you know, wood, whatever. The, so, the, but the flip side of it is, is that when you think about real estate brokerage, it's so fragmented. I just imagine that nobody in their right mind would ever consider getting licensed in all 50 states and, and all the different MLSs. And, and so for me, I'm like going, that's like, that's like awesome. Because if, if nobody else will do it, that means that, that it's sort of like blue ocean for, for, for us to go do something that everybody else would say is absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of simplified my mind. I'm going, no, how tough is it to get licensed in a, in a state, join an MLS, find a managing broker? And, and, and for me, I kind of just simplified it. And so it reduced the stress. But I know most you know, business owners, broker owners, uh, or people who are thinking about going that direction, if they don't sort of have that mindset, they go, man, this is a ton of liability. You know, this is crazy. Why the hell would I ever do this? And I'm like going, that's right. You're not going to do it. I am. <laughs> and Glenn, what's so interesting is that when I was joining back in early uh, 2018 at this point, um, I'm in New York City. And I remember right. New York City being one of the final markets that you were opening up in in regards to the MLS and opening a market share. And um, I just remember at the time, everyone around me said, Juan, you're going to where? I don't even know. I've never heard of this company before. And I don't even think they have a brand here. Why would you ever go out there and join there? And it said, because of the opportunity that we have. And uh, if you look at it now, uh, a lot of the objections we get with agents we speak with, it's EXP is too big. Uh, we see it everywhere. <laughs> and it's at that point where everyone's joining. And I wish I got in three years ago. But when you look at it from the 10 year perspective, right? The opportunity that we have the chance to hit a million agents over the next 10 years, well, at that rate, we're not even at 5% of total market share. So I think people's mindset really holds them back when they look at this from a long-term perspective. Well, and the other thing I think you have to think about is that real estate is a high turnover industry. So when we think about, you know, 10, you know, a million agents, you know, um, 10 years from now, think about how many agents will have joined and how many people who would have left the industry in that same period of time worldwide, we're talking about tens of millions of, of people. So even if we were at a million agents today, let's just say we were at a million agents, you think about the idea that you could still join today and you still could build an organization, in my mind, that could be 10,000 agents over the next you know, five to 10 years as an agent and be totally set you know, based on the value you're providing to the marketplace. So if you're providing value to agents and brokers and, and you're helping them grow, they'll, they'll want to join your, your iteration of the platform. And there's no reason why you know, there, somebody couldn't build a 10,000 person organization, 20,000, 50,000, potentially even 100,000, know, given, given enough time and, and given the type of value that they bring to the marketplace. Just just to clarify, I want to go back to the earnings real quick, just to clarify for people that are listening to, to <laughs> because when you mentioned about the commissions being figured into the revenue, I just want to make sure that listeners don't think we're cooking the books over here. So I want to bring it back to the actual net profits, um, 2020, which for EXP was 31 million. That's what we have reported here in this article I read. And for Remax, it was 11 million. So you got Remax making profit wise, profit wise, after all said and done, less than a million dollars a month as a company, profit wise. And we have EXP, 12 year company versus a 40 something year company at 31 million <clears throat> in profit last year. Just amazing, man. Just, just incredible. Yeah, no, it, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, we five, five profitable quarters in a, in a row, um, you know, you know, I can't make any predictions. We don't provide for, for guidance, but, you know, I'd be hard pressed to, to figure out how we wouldn't continue to be, you know, profitable for the foreseeable future because our model so um, is designed in such a way that all of our costs are variable. So we don't have, like, if you think about somebody who owns a bunch of offices, so you look like Compass, we'll, we'll just, I'll pick on them because they just filed their, 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 their S1. They lost over 200 freaking million dollars. Yeah, they did more, more revenue than us. They did wh whatever they did, 3.9 billion in revenue, which is again, commissions generally over the last 12 months. They grew at a slower rate than we did, but they lost, I think something like $236 million or something. And that the reason why they're, you know, they're gonna have challenges where we won't is they've got so much fixed asset 
bricks and mortar leases and all the other stuff that goes along with it. They've got to go public just to raise enough money to make sure they've got another three to five years of, uh, of, of runway. Um, and, and then they're going to hopefully, you know, probably hope to get acquired by someone else who wants to be in the space. I have no clue how their model is going to scale. Mm-hmm. What was our biggest, uh, our largest loss for a year? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, prior to 20, 17 or 18, we, um, one of the ways we, we calculated our stock options uh, expense was using what's called the intrinsic value method, which I objected against, but our auditors at the time said we had to use this methodology. But basically every time the stock went up, it would, in, in value, you take the number of options we had out that were all set in 2012 and they'd multiply the, uh, the delta times the number of options. So we might have a $20 million artificial loss in some, some quarters just because of the way they, the stock options were, mm. were, were valued. So we, we ended up, I think, last year or the year before, our, our newer auditors actually made us go back and redo all of our books because they said that was the wrong way to calculate options. I'm like, I know. And so we ended up having to, to redo them. But, you know, we, it was, you know, probably, you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars, you know, wow. and when you sort of work, work, work it out. But even then, it really wasn't, we were still cash flow positive that pretty much the whole time. I think we. in terms of meetings and um, meeting with your staff and, and things of that nature. Yeah. So, um, hey guys, so- uh, <laughs> internet went out. I, it was crazy. It just completely dropped for a second. <laughs> Let's go back because it's recording on my end. Let's go back. The last thing I heard you say was that you were, you were, you were uh, cash flow positive for the year. Yeah. So we were, yeah. So, um, so we were, yeah, cash flow, uh, cash flow positive pretty much since inception. And you know, we mm-hmm. had, uh, um, we had uh, 2018, you know, cash got a little tight. And so we had to raise a little bit of money just to make sure we had had a little extra cushion. I think we raised like $800,000 or something like that. Agents and brokers were able to, to, to take advantage of that um, accredited. So that, that worked out really well for them. Um, and uh, but for the most part, we've been, you know, again, cash flow positive since, since the day we started. Cool, cool. And then what, what were you guys chatting about? when, <laughs> when I, I-, I was just asking Glenn, so uh, what's the day-to-day look like now that you have such a large team, you're employing more than a thousand people, and obviously you have to deal with a lot more things than you had to deal with back in 2008. Um, what's your day-to-day look like as a CEO? Yeah, it's actually a little easier today than it was in, say, 2016, 17, 18, um, because we have such a great team. I mean, uh, uh, Jeff Whiteside, who joined us uh, a couple of years ago in 20. 20- 2018. Um, he's been just phenomenal. He had you know, a lot of experience back from the GE days, but just a really smart guy when it comes to sort of organizing and finding the right people and, 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 and that type of stuff. So he's been, he's been awesome. Obviously, Jason, Dave, Stacy, Courtney, Michael Valdez, um, you know, Curtis Dixon, all, all, you know, we've got so many people that are in great positions in the organization, just making sure things work well. I still, um, you know, answer every single workplace chat that I get in, in workplace. Um, starting to get a little bit, um, uh, I'm getting, a, you know, hit up quite a bit from. How from many hours a day do you spend on that? You know, it's, uh, I probably spend uh, about 30 minutes to an hour answering workplace chats from, from people outside of my direct management team. So these are agents and brokers. Mm. Uh, that are that are sending me notes and saying, "Hey, thanks for starting the company," you know, mm. or 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 have you thought about this or this is what's going on or we just had this thing happen. 
So there's some crisis management in there, some just you know making sure I connect people to the right people. Um, but I spend probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on the day uh, on that. And then, uh, then the rest of it's, you know, with, with the team. And I'm working right now with Success Magazine pretty, pretty significantly helping them sort of think about the, the, how they're going to scale and how they're going to make the biggest impact they can, they can make. And then also thinking about, you know, how does that lend itself to, to EXP because it's really uh, another competitive moat that, uh, you know, nobody else has. I mean, you're like Ricky, you and Juan, you guys are owners in Success Magazine. So Right, right. It's incredible, and, and, man. And, and I think to the listeners out there, I don't think many people are aware that you acquired Success Magazine uh, just a few few months ago. And um, it, it's really just a huge value add to everyone that's already an owner in the company. Where, where do you see um, that company kind of playing a part of in the future with our growth and what you're trying to do? Yeah, I mean, we're already starting to leverage a little bit. I mean, we've got some keynotes that are coming because of our because of Success Magazine in inside of EXP Realty. So, uh, Jamie Kern Lima is going to be well, probably should wait to announce it, but she's going to be one of our keynotes. But she's also going to be on the cover uh, of the of the magazine. Um, and and there's just a lot of interesting people that you know Success Magazine just means so much in the personal development space. And if you think about, I mean, real estate happens. We, we sell real estate, but we're really in the personal development space, but, but we monetize it through helping you know, buyers buy and, and sellers sell. And, and, and so the more that we can sort of lean into you know, improving ourselves, making ourselves better, better, better people, better individuals, better at, at, at business and life, we're, we're just going to be able to help more people. And so it really is foundational from that perspective. Do you... Um the uh the stockholder events you guys we do those twice a year right correct yeah see i'm still learning this because i came in right at covid we did it virtually um then we did the next one virtually and we're doing this one in may right virtually we are yeah so we're doing this one virtually in all likelihood we'll do exp con this year virtually and then my guess is that 2022 we'll be back to in real life events, which I can't wait to, to, to do that. Cause Oh, me neither. <laughs> it's uh, and, and my guess is, is, you know, if you think about it, we will have had one, two full years since we did our last company event. And, and we will have went from what, whatever 15,000 agents or, or something, or actually 25,000 <laughs> agents at the end of, or of 2019 to somewhere, you know, 70, 80, 90, maybe a hundred thousand agents by the end of this year. You're going to have to get the Miami Dolphins uh, arena. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we, we could literally have 10,000 people show up at our next event. Yeah. A lot of people are, um, are hitting me up talking about Vegas in fall there. I guess people are kind of wishing and hoping, and they really want it to be an in-person shareholders meeting this fall, I guess. Uh, A lot of people are hitting me up about that, but I guess it's kind of a wait and see kind of deal, right? Yeah, EXPCon. Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm doing a in real life event this week with Grant Cardone, and you know, Grant. Uh, I was just talking to him yesterday, and he had lots of people reach out to him, say, "Hey, it's a big risk doing doing an in real life event, and 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 all of that." And I think you know, at some point, we're going to have to pull the bandaid off, and with the vaccine getting out there, and 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 people able to make more educated risks on their own on, on their own part. But I think we'll have definitely more um uh, liability waivers if people come to an in real life event oh yeah there you go that's all you got to do you know i mean if it if they feel like you know they want to take the risk then why not you know if they're willing to take the risk and they want to then why should we hold them back right so who knows you might have just sold me on doing the in real life event <laughs> later on this year <laughs> we'll Glenn, see so- so, so as, as we start wrapping up, we'd love to learn more about uh, just personal hobbies, right? Business aside, what, what do you do for fun over there? Uh, yeah, so a um, little bit of a boater. So we've got, uh, we've got a, a boat we just uh, bought last uh, August. Um, we've only actually taken it on one trip. Uh, so that was, we did about uh, two, two and a half weeks on it. But since we, uh, and that was right after we acquired it and then it's been getting tons of work getting it ready for this next boating season. So we've got it now wrapped and up top and, and we've got uh, a bunch of, we upgraded the battery system and did a bunch of stuff. So we're excited about that. Um, I've 
I've been a runner most of my life. So like this morning I got out for a, a, a little over a, a six mile run, 6.2. I did 10 K this morning. That's not a little run. run. That's not a little, you know, that's not a, being a little runner. That's six miles is that's, that's a big runner. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it it's um, yeah, it, I, I used to run a lot of I, I, half marathons like 2015. I think I ran six half marathons Wow! that, that year. And, um, and I like that distance, but right now there's not a whole bunch of road races to do. So, um, 6.2 is about the longest I've run so far this year. Do you go to the gym or just run? Uh, no, I, I need to start. I, I was trying on some clothes a couple of days ago and put, <laughs> had some short sleeves on. I'm going, man, I do not have any guns right now. I need to, I need to spend a little time lifting some, doing some biceps. Ricky and I are going to fly down and start training you on the weights. <laughs> there you go. Cool, man. Well, Glenn, Hey, listen, appreciate your time, man. Uh, with your busy schedule and down in Miami and your hotel room. And we just really appreciate you, you know, building this company, this amazing company, spending some time with us today, sharing a little bit about your story and everything. Um, I know you don't have Instagram, right? Did you finally pull the plug on that? Did you rip that bandaid off yet? Yeah, I'm on Instagram because I, I I joined uh, I joined Clubhouse. Yeah, so I've been doing the Clubhouse. And, yeah, and Clubhouse, um, you know, is is highly connected to Instagram. Right. So that's so you know. It, so I you started, finally got one, huh? Yeah. So and 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 since January, I'm up to like 2,500 followers or something. Yeah, like that. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and share it really quickly, just so. Uh... Everyone could go ahead and reach out to you. Do you do you answer all of your DMs like Ricky and I do? <laughs> uh, um, uh, no, I've got somebody starting to check my DMs, and I'm I'm looking at uh, it's a, I don't know it's called Inst- Instagrammer or or actually there's a there's a like an automated bot to answer messages because I got a, I have a lot of people writing me every time I go on Clubhouse, my Instagram blows up on the DMs. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so man, I, for everyone listening, good. yeah, look at that Glenn- stud, man. Yeah, check them out. For everyone listening, Glenn's going to be uh, speaking live at the 10X Growth Conference. So definitely check in on him there. Uh, if you want to go ahead and reach out to me and Ricky, you need any help, uh, whether you're an agent locally, nationally, or worldwide, and you need any assistance collaborating and growing your business, reach out to us. You can find me on Instagram at Latino Agent. Ricky, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm still answering all my DMs. So that's why I asked you that, Glenn. Um, I answer all my Instagram DMs personally, and I spend about two hours a day on that. Um, so that's kind of why I was wondering how many hours you spend on that. Cause I spent a lot of time there, um, just going back and forth one-on-one with people that just need help or asking questions or like you say, reaching out and saying thanks and stuff like that. And, um, um, well, maybe I'll do an auto reply and say, Hey, I, I don't have time to answer you, but if you write Ricky, <laughs> he'll, he'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I actually had some auto reply stuff there for a while, but you know, I do so much business in there. I bring so many agents over, uh, help so many agents, uh, do so much business, you know, in there. So that it's time well spent for me until I get to the point where I can't, right. There'll be a day where it'll be way too much, way too overwhelming. And there's no way I could do four hours or five hours a day. There's just no way. You should, so. you should think about doing a, a zero to diamond, uh, club clubhouse. If you haven't done it already. We've got one going. I've got my team. They they're kind of running one and uh, okay. stepping there every once in a while. So yeah, you know the 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 <laughs> the sad part there is is they're not on Android yet, and I'm a, I'm an Android lover, and so I actually took my wife's old iPhone and I literally it's just for Clubhouse for me. So I don't get on there as much as I would if it were if I was getting notifications and you know if it was right there on my phone. You know, so uh, I don't know if I haven't even checked to see if it's on Android yet. I don't. I don't think. I yeah, still they're think they're, they're, they're working. They're working on it. Yeah, but you, yeah. if you've got an iPad or you've got obviously an iPad, uh, somebody yeah. else's uh, old iPhone, you can uh, you can jump on it. But it's pretty. She, it's a pretty cool platform. That's how I. That's how I met Grant, and I've met a bunch of people, you know, on on that that platform. Oh yeah, I've been on there. I've been on there and done some events and talked to a lot of people. It's incredible. I mean, it really is. But you got to have some time set aside if you're going to go on that app, right? There you go. There you <laughs> you got to really be locked in and ready to spend a good chunk of your time. So that's the problem with me a little bit. But no, I'm going to spend a lot more time on there over the next couple months because I think it's, I think it's really, really powerful. Especially now where you can't have these live events. You know, it's kind of takes place of it a little bit. Yeah, a, l- a little bit. Well, cool. guys, hey, thanks for thanks for having me on, and uh, and you know, let me know if 
there's anything I can do to support you guys um, um, in your business. And you guys are obviously knocking it out of the park, but uh, just uh, let me know. You know how to get a hold of me. Absolutely, man. We're just glad to be partners with you. We'll talk to you soon, bro. Okay, Thanks, awesome. Okay. Take care. Thanks, guys. Later.